looked over Jordan, what did I see? Come for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. I saw. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Stony Run Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church. Good to see you this morning. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. We're excited about, about what God's doing. Um, I want to um, thank everyone from the pulpit, everybody that took part in the community revival, everyone that stood out in the parking lot for me and froze to death, everybody that, that cooked, everybody that did anything. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It was a, it was a great... Uh, uh, set of services. Um, I really, really felt like we represented so well at Stony Run, and I'm so thankful for it. Y'all give yourselves a, a round of applause today. That was, that was fabulous. You made your pastor proud. Amen. I love it. I love it. So I'm ex really excited about, about what's going on there. I do also want to make one announcement. I know that some of you all uh, like to go to, when Rodney and I go to the Senior Citizen Village to uh, minister why our next senior citizen, boy, this is like a tongue, tongue twister this morning. I can't get it out. The next senior citizens village nursing home service will be Tuesday, March 27th at 1045 a.m. So if anybody's interested in coming out with us to sing and um, just, you know, pray with the folks and uh, just have a good time in the Lord. I'm going to tell you that the folks there at the senior citizens village have taught me and Rodney a lot about being a Christian and following God because they have a unique perspective that we've not got to yet. Amen? Amen. So, so we're excited about what, what we get to do there. So I, I do want to leave it there. I want to go ahead and let Christy have some announcements for us this morning, and then uh, we'll go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Okay, I have to take Joey's spot today. Um, first off, volunteers day is next Saturday from 10 to 2. He said he needs all nursery children and youth volunteers that can to be here. Um, I know lunch will be provided. After that is um, Winter Jam is next Saturday. I think it's $15 a person. I'm not 100% sure on what time we're leaving. We'll have to check with Joe about that on Wednesday or so, but just message him and check about that. Um, on Saturday... March 31st is our egg extravaganza. He would like for all of us that can to um, donate candy for that. And I think it is from 12 to 2. And I think that's it. So, yeah, just check with him, though, about the time for Winter Jam. Thank y'all. All right. Thank you, Christy. Let's go ahead and, and rise to our feet and go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer this morning. That's why we come out. We come out to enjoy his presence together as the body of Christ, as the church. So let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. God, you are so good to us. And Lord, we know that. We know that your goodness, your mercy, your grace is just sufficient in all areas of our lives, God. And we thank you for that today. We thank you for wholeness, God. We thank you for forgiveness. Lord, we just thank you that you are our God, that we don't walk alone. Lord, that everywhere that we go, that you are right there with us. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives in us, that leads us, that guides us, that directs us in all things. And God, we just want to bless your name today and thank you for the goodness in our lives. Lord, Lord, we gather together today to worship you and praise you, God. And we ask that you would bless everything that is sung, everything that's said, God. Everything that's done today, Lord, is, is to be pleasing to you. And so, God, we ask that you would just be with us today. Inhabit our praises today, God, as we, as we come together as your church, as your body. And, God, we just thank you for this day that you've given us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
remain standing this morning. We're going to do a congregational this morning that uh, has touched so many. We've done it in a, a few services that we've had recently, and uh, it seems to touch hearts. But I see several, several visitors today. So look around you. If you see a visitor, make a welcome today. We're glad to have you here at Stony Run. All right, here we go. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. First verse. Give the Lord a praise offering as you're seated. Continue to worship with the choir and the praise team today. We're going to reach back and get some of those hymns and uh, some uh, little bit of Southern gospel for you today. This is going to be Reach Back Sunday. So put your hands together and let's worship the Lord.
again this morning and I want some of you to smile <laughs> all right because if you're going on the same journey I'm going on we're going to be happy and right now y'all look kind of gloom this morning gloom and despair so let's put a smile on our face let's put our hands together and worship our Savior this morning well I'm going to take nothing from the journey now we're going to make it to heaven somehow go down to the end and try to turn me on In the world that'll ever take the place of God's love. Silver and gold can never buy his love from above. When my soul needs healing and I begin to feel that it's fine, I can say thank the Lord I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Well, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Gotta make it to heaven time. Though the devil tempts me and tries to turn me around.
can be seated this morning as we take up the offering.
Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. God, we thank you for your provision, Lord, that you provide for us day in and day out. And Lord, that every good and perfect gift comes from your divine hand. And Lord, we thank you for that today. So Lord, as we give back, God, we give with that same spirit that you give to each one of us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. praise God this morning a little bit. I want to praise God that um, we have folks that are wanting to join our church. Is that something to praise God about? Amen. Amen. I'm excited about that, you know, because that tells me that we're doing something right. That's telling me that God is moving mightily in the house and that people are, are being touched in such a way that they want to join our church. So if I could, if I could get all of those that want to join the church today, why please come on up here and go ahead and make me a single file row here in the front. And I want you to look toward the congregation to start with. So if I could get all y'all up here, praise God. Amen. We're excited about this today. Amen. 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 I don't know if you guys know any of these folks up here, but, but you need to know them. Praise God. These are your brothers and sisters in Christ. But I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves to you this morning, and then we'll go ahead and, and move on with this. And hey, My name is Mark T. Um, I've been living in Plainview all my life. I've known Rick for a long time. That's about it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> they won't hold that against you. <laughs> Uh, my name's Jamie Atkins, and this is my son, Logan Atkins, and my daughter, Claudia Atkins, and my beautiful, Cindy Atkins. <laughs> I'm Deanna Carroll, and this is my husband. What's up? I'm Jeff Carroll, and uh, just want to let y'all know, uh, we've been coming here for a few months now, and and this is home to us, so Amen. all y'all have welcomed us in, and Amen. and we, we truly enjoy it. Thank you. I'm Craig Lovick, and I've been coming here now for a little over a year, but I had the opportunity to meet Rick through Rodney, away from church, 
And y'all, I hope you know what a wonderful pastor you have here and what a good man he is. And what a wonderful church y'all have here because we're at home and we love it here. We want to thank y'all. We love all y'all. Amen. Amen. It's exciting, isn't it? All right. I'm going to go ahead and use the steps. They told me I'm getting too old to jump, so I'm going to go ahead and just go up the steps. If y'all, if all my candidates would go ahead and, and turn and face me this morning, this is real simple. We, we don't get real fancy or too hardcore around here. So I'm going to ask y'all two questions this morning. And I already know the answers, but I'm going to go ahead and, and ask it anyways. Uh, the first question I want to ask all of y'all is, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ if you're sa as your Savior? If so, just tell me yes. Amen. Amen. All right. The second question is like the first and, and fairly simple. Is it your desire to join the fellowship and ministry of Stony Run Church? If so, say yes. yes. Amen. All right. I'm going to read the church covenant now. Um, and this talks about... How, how we as a body of believers uh, work together and, and, and what we're promising one another because it's a covenant, you know. Just like we make a covenant with God, we also make a covenant with one another as church members. There's things that we promise to do for one another. So I'm going to go ahead and read the church covenant this morning. It tells us, having been brought as we believe by divine grace to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and Preserver, we do now solemnly and joyfully covenant and agree by God's help to walk together in brotherly love. We therefore enter into covenant as members of Stony Run Pentecostal Free Will Baptist Church and as Christians that we will watch over each other in love, sharing together each other's joys and sorrows, and that we will not forsake the assembling of ourselves together or omit the great duty of prayer for ourselves and others that by divine assistance we will endeavor to bring up those under our care in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, that in all things we will strive to exemplify our profession by corresponding practice, to abstain from sinful conformity to the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in all our deportments, that we will sustain the worship, ordinances, faith and practice in the doctrine of this church, that we will contribute cheerfully with our tithes and offerings to the church according to our ability, to the support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the general spread of the gospel. In keeping this solemn covenant, may we ever enjoy the blessings and presence of the great head of the church. If y'all would please turn around and face the congregation again. Uh, we have a, a minor formality that we need to do this morning. What I need is I need a motion from the congregation to receive these candidates as members of Stony Run Church. Can I get a motion? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So can I just get a, a vote of acclamation this morning from the congregation to receive these folks as members of Stony Run Church? A hearty amen something? Amen. Praise God. All right. All right, now I got a little bit for the congregation this morning. This is a two-way street, right? You join the church, you, you support the church, but then the church also supports you. So this morning, I'm going to ask the congregation, will you join with myself and the deacons in welcoming these new members into our fellowship? If so, say yes. yes. All right. And congregation, the second part here, will you commit to regularly pray for these new members? If so, give me an amen. All right, thank you. Let's go ahead and um, pray over these. If I could get my deacons that are present, those that are not occupied and doing something else, if y'all would come up and go ahead and, uh, and pray over these folks with me this morning. We want to, want to pray a, a prayer of blessing over them, that, we, that God just move mightily in their lives in this time. It's a, this is a big step. It's a big deal to join into a church. And it's a, it's a serious thing. So we're going to go ahead and, and pray this morning. If my brothers would go ahead and, and um, lay hands on them and pray over them while we'll go ahead and, and pray this morning. Congregation, if you'll reach a hand out to them this morning in faith. Father God, we thank you for these new members that are, that are joining our body, God. And Lord, we thank you that, you, that the, the church is growing, God. We thank you that, that day by day, that as the gospels preached, that more people come to know you as their Lord and Savior. And God, that they desire and yearn to be in a body of believers. So God, I pray that each one of these that's standing here this morning, God, that they will realize and know that they're part of something way bigger than themselves. And Lord, that they have a church family around them, God. One that will pray for, with them. God, one that will laugh with them. One that will cry with them. One that will help them 
in any way possible. And God, we thank you for the body of Christ. God, we thank you that we are a church made up of Christians, of individual members. But Lord, that we're strong because each one of us brings in unique gifts to the church. And Lord, without all these gifts operating in the church, God, that we would not be complete. But God, we are made complete and we are made more complete with each and every member that comes and joins our fellowship. So God, we pray your blessing upon these today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. If I could, if we go ahead and give the right hand of fellowship this morning, I want you to go ahead and welcome them into the church.
I'll try to stay and keep you. I should get you home before one, probably, so we'll be all right. Amen. What's the rush, What's the rush right? Praise God. I wanted to talk a little bit today um, about how the church operates in today's world. Um, we live in a very different time than maybe any generation before us in the last quite a few here in the United States. Um, there's a lot of, uh, of danger. There's a lot of threats. There's a lot of things that go on in this world that, that you wouldn't think would happen, and yet it seems like they target the church. Um, there's been an awful lot of shootings in the last few years, um, knife attacks, all kinds of things. And you name it, um, people, people have, have gone to, to very great lengths to um, come against the church. But the thing is, is what do we do as the church in the 21st century to continue the work? Okay? Because you see, the work can't stop. We cannot stop preaching Jesus Christ. We cannot stop living our gospel and our testimony out. We cannot stop gathering as the body of Christ. I mean, that's where our strength is, is in, is in the time that we gather together. Whether you realize this or not, if you, if you decide that you don't want to come to church, then you're missing the blessing of being in the gathered presence of God. See, there's, there's a power and a presence there that's unlike anything else that you can ever experience or imagine. In, in the midst of this, the Holy Spirit of God is here in our midst, dwelling in each one of us. And there is a power here that cannot be denied. I've seen people changed. I've seen people healed. I've seen things, strongholds torn down. I've seen, seen things removed from people that absolutely blew my mind. But that's because as we gather and we meet. So, so what do we do? I mean, some people say, well, you don't do anything, right? You just pray and have faith and, and, and you just, just let it go at that. Well, I, w I would like to do what the Bible tells us to do. Amen. Because see, I stand upon the word of God and, and, I, and I, I choose my actions and what I do in the word of God. So I decided, well, you know, maybe I need to preach out of Nehemiah today. Nehemiah was trying to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. They had been torn down. They had been, been, been destroyed. They, they were broken and, and they needed to be rebuilt. And that was a, a task that had to happen. So as we look at this this morning, I want you to take a look at Nehemiah chapter 4. Let's go here and let's see what Nehemiah did in the face of, of threats, in the face of uncertainty, in the face of, of, of things going on to where it appeared to be quite dangerous at times possibly. And see what happened there. And let's go ahead and, and let God speak to us through this, this piece of scripture here. Father God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to speak to our hearts and our lives. God, there's nothing more, Lord, that we would rather do than live out our faith. And God, we ask that you would be with us, God. Give us strength. Give us courage. God, build our faith. Lord, let us know that you are there with us every step of the way and that, God, you are our King, our soon-coming King, our Lord and our Savior. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to go ahead and start in chapter 4 and just, just set, the, set the tone. It, it says in chapter 4, starting in verse 1, it says, But so it happened when Sanballat heard that they were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant, and he mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they stones that are burned? I mean, sometimes I feel like that the world looks at the church today and says, What's the church doing? What are they doing? What do they think that they, that they can change the world through this, this one named Jesus Christ? Do they think that they can bring people to salvation? Do they think that they can deliver people from sin and, and from things in their lives? What do they think they're doing? And I feel like the world all the time judges us as Christians. They say, oh, well, they're not going to do any good. It's not going to do any good. But I'm here to tell you that God has a plan for his church. In verse 3 it says, Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, Whatever they build, even if a fox goes up on it, he'll break down their stone wall. Verse 4, Hear, O oh, our God, for we are despised. Turn the reproach on their own heads and give 
them as plunder to a land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So that was the prayer of Nehemiah there that, that they prayed. So verse 6 says this, so we built the wall. I mean, I want you to understand that he had all kinds of people coming against him. They said that they wouldn't be able to build anything, that even if a little old fox went up on that wall, that it would fall down, that they couldn't do anything. But Nehemiah said, so we built the wall. And the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. The people, they were not going to allow all this stuff to stop. And they were hearing rumblings in the background. They were hearing all these things. But they had a mind to work. They were working in faith. They decided, you know what? We're going to rebuild this wall. You know, today I feel like at the church, sometimes we have a mind to work. And sometimes we don't. And I feel like that we need to make sure that we have a mind to work, that we need to do the things that Jesus Christ would have us to do to lead people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to change lives and hearts. Verse 7, and now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites and the Ash Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed, that they became very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. So you hear, you hear that there's, there's a conspiracy going on between Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites. They're all putting a conspiracy together. They are going to attack. They're going to come and attack Jerusalem. They're going to create confusion. But notice what Nehemiah says. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. I'm here to tell you the Bible says to watch and pray. There's a reason why we're supposed to watch and pray. I, I want you to think about this. Sometimes people say, well, if we'll just have faith, then God will keep us safe. Well, I'm here to tell you that, okay, if you're going to roll down that road, then any of you, how many of you take prescription drugs on a daily basis? All right, I want you to stop taking all your medication, all your pills. Quit going to the doctor because God's going to heal you. Yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? No. None whatsoever. God gave us doctors. God gave us pharmacists. God gave us medication. He gave us all those things. There's things that we need to make sure we do. Well, I could go one step further, you know. Those of you that think that, that God's going to absolutely protect you everywhere you go, go ahead and make sure you cancel your car insurance because you'll never be in another wreck. Matter of fact, if you leave this world, God's going to make sure that you got plenty of money to go ahead and get buried. It's getting quiet, Rodney. Exactly. So what did Nehemiah did? Nehemiah said, because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Church, we're supposed to watch. We're supposed to watch and make sure that we are, we are watching around our church. Look, there's a reason. I am the shepherd of this flock. And you don't think that I'm watching. I'm watching everything that's going on in the world. I'm watching everything that's going on in the community. I'm watching everywhere I can. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm as it possibly can be within my power to do so. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I watch. Verse 10 said, then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing and there's so much rubbish that we're... 11 and our adversary said, they'll neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. And see, that's the problem is that when you have an adversary, an enemy out there, they're not going to come and say, hey, guess what? We're going to give you an advance warning. They are going to come through the door. And we will have carnage then, right? Verse 12, so it was when the Jews return, they'll be upon us. So Nehemiah does this. He says, therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings. And I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. So they actually armed themselves to make sure that they could keep their families safe. Would you think about that for a second, church? See, there's a gigantic, gigantic 
discussion going on in this country. What should we as churches do to keep ourselves safe? What lengths should we go to to keep ourselves safe? I want you to think about that. Because See, your pastor thinks about these things. See, I've absolutely earnestly prayed and thought and sought God's counsel over these things. And God has spoken to me through Nehemiah exactly what we need to do. Verse 14, and I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and what? And fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. I'm here to tell you, church, that we don't need to lay down. We don't need to go quietly into the night. We need to make sure that we stand up for what we believe in. I'm here to tell you we need to. We need to protect our families. We need to protect our children. We need to protect the lives. And I need to make sure that I'm protecting you as you come to this church on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night that somebody's watching. Somebody's manning the wall out there so that we know that nobody's going to slick on in here. We've got to do that, church. We've got to do that. If we're not, we're negligent. If we're not, we're just sticking our head in the sand. And I'm here to tell you we can't do that. Verse 15, and it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing. See, that's the thing about it, and that's what needs to happen, is that you need to have a, 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 you need to have a reputation of a place that's watching. You need to have a reputation of a place that's ready. You need to have a reputation that the enemies, when they come, that they'll know that they're going to meet resistance. And if that's the case, then most of the time enemies are cowards. They're absolute cowards. You see these people that shoot up churches and shoot up schools and shoot all these places up? That's because they're absolute cowards. They're scared to death to stand against a man. Oh, they'll come and attack your children. They'll attack your wives, your children. But if a real man stood up to them, they'd go the other way. And we know that. We need to stand up, church. This is a whole different world. What we're in today. This is a completely different thing. If you're back in 1950, you need to fast forward about 60 years and get to where we're at right now. Because where we're at right now is an absolutely different world. It's a different time. It's a different place. So it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. See, I want you to understand something, that there is a work to be completed in the church of Jesus Christ. There's a work that's got to be done. No matter what, we've got to preach the gospel. No matter what, we've got to bring people to Jesus Christ. No matter what, we've got to do those things. We've got to do that. That's why we're here. We are here as a lifeguard station in this community. People should look to Stony Run Church and say, you know, that's some place where people come and get saved. That's some place where people come and get delivered. That's some place where people come and get healed. That's what we should be. The work can't stop no matter what's going on around us. If that's the case, then we need to make sure that we're able to work while it's still light. Because there'll come a day when we won't be able to work. Verse 16, so it was from that time on, listen to this, and see a lot of folks say, well, well, I don't really want to be taken out of worship service to be a watchman. I don't want to be taken out of worship because, see, then I'm not worshiping, but I want, to, I want you to understand something, that there are times when you've got to be taken out of worship to do a job for the church. There's times when you've got to serve. It says here, it says in verse 16, so it was from that time on that half of my servants Worked at construction while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. So you had half working and half ready watching that you had, had, to, had to watch and work. It says in 17, those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other they held a weapon. Church, I want you to understand something, that there may come a time where it gets like that. There may come a time where we, we've got to be able to, to work for God with one hand and carry a weapon with the other hand to make sure that we continue, that the work goes forward. Because there's always going to be cowards. There's always going to be enemies. The devil's always out there trying to tear things up. And if you haven't seen it, you need to look in your life and see how the evil one is always trying 
Every time you're about to have a massive major victory in your life, usually the devil shows up over here and sets a fire. And next thing you know, you're not looking at victory anymore. You're putting fire out. And I'm here to tell you that you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. It tells us in verse 18, Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built. And the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. And verse 19 said, Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, The work is great and extensive. I'm here to tell you, church, the work is great and extensive. Have you looked out in this country lately? The work is absolutely great. It's absolutely extensive. They tell me, statistically speaking, 17% of the people that live around this church are in church today. 17% of the people in your community are in church. Anybody hear me? 17%. That's, That's pathetic. And that scares me to death because that means that we're way down on the low end and not on the high end. I would have said 50% or 60% or 70%. They tell me 17%. The work is great and extensive. And we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever, when it, wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. And our God will fight for us. I'm here to tell you that we need to make sure that we have rallying points. That there's times where we need to cry out to one another. That they'll rally to us. That's part of being in the church. Being surrounded by people. That when you're at your last. When you're at the lowest you can possibly be. That you can cry out. And the people will rally to you. That they will pray for you. That they'll lift you up. That they'll move. In a way that will support you. Verse 21. So we labored in the work. And half of the men held spears from daybreak. Until the stars appeared. And at the same time I also said to people. Let each man and his servant stay at night in Jerusalem. That there may be our guard by night. And a working party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except that every one took them off for washing. Church, I believe we live in a time that we're being called to vigilance. We're being called to be watchmen on the wall. We're being called to look. How much do you love your brothers and sisters in Christ today? How much do you love them? Do you love them enough to watch for them? Do you love them enough to serve them? Do you love them enough to sacrifice for them? Do you love them that much? See, that's the whole thing. See, church is starting to get real now. You know, it used to be a game where we'd all go on Sunday morning and everybody pat you on the back because you went to church. Oh, you're such a good person. You went to church today. Oh, you're such a good person. You went to church today. Oh, you're such a good person. Now the world looks at you and they don't call you a good person because you go to church anymore. Now they look at you and they and they say, oh, well, that's those those people that that are hate mongers, those that hate everybody that are different than them, those that hate things. Right. But I'm here to tell you that there's a mighty work that needs to be done in the church. It's a mighty work. Are you willing to do what it takes to send the work forward? I mean, that's my question today. Are you willing to do what it's going to take to send the work forward? Are you willing to do what it takes to bring people to Jesus Christ? Are you willing to do what it takes to make sure that we've got somebody watching this place? Are you willing to do those things? Or are you like, well, you know, that's a good idea, but I just wish somebody else would do it. The time for somebody else is over. The time is now, church. Would you all stand with me this morning? I'm not going to keep you long because I'm here to tell you that we have work to do, church. We have work to do. What has God called you to? What's he called you to? What's he called you to do for the church? For your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? 
What's he called you to today? Church, I believe that we've been called to be vigilant. I believe we've been called to be watchmen on the wall. And not just in a security sense, but also in a sense for the souls of the United States of America. That we're supposed to stand upon the wall. We're supposed to stand upon the Word of God. We're supposed to stand upon the truth. We're supposed to stand upon those things and not be moved. And that's going to come as a price. There's going to be a price for this. You know, I hate to tell you, but you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose family. You're going to lose loved ones because they're going to look at you and say, look, you're just too far out there. You're way too zealous. You're, you, you just need to leave this Jesus thing alone. you got to quit that. And Jesus told us about that, that families, you know, would be separated because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That these things would happen. Well, guess what? We finally got far enough along in the end times that it's starting to fulfill itself. Day after day, it's starting to fulfill itself. The love of people have waxed cold one for another in this country. Have you seen that? Have you seen how cold people are to one another? How that they won't, won't help one another anymore. That they'll just leave them lie there or look at them or whatever it is. They won't do a thing. They won't lift a finger for a loved one anymore. Let's say, well, I hope somebody else takes care of them. I hope somebody else has got that on their heart. Look how children are today. And I'm not knocking the kids. But I'm telling you that there's a lot of kids out there that are raised in homes where they're not taught right from wrong. They don't, they don't even know right from wrong anymore because those individuals that are so-called parents are not modeling what it's like to be a believer in Jesus Christ. They're not modeling what it's like to be an adult. They're not modeling any of this to our kids. And then we look at our kids and we wonder, what happened to this generation? Well, you need to look at the parents first before you blame those kids. You look at their parents and you see what they're doing because what the parents will do, the kids will do. And that's the truth. Now, I'm going to tell you, you look at the parents and you'll see what the kids are going to do. We look at all these things in this country. It's time that we as the church start being the church. That we start standing for truth. That we start standing for families again. That we start standing together strong. Everything's coming against the family now. Have you noticed everything? Everything against the family. I believe that's just the evil one trying to tear it all down. You know, if he can figure out a way to get in our, get in our lives, in our homes, to where, where he can destroy and kill and steal and do all those things, then he's won. So I want to challenge you today that you take it a step further. That you take it serious. This is serious business, folks. And believe it or not, to some people, it's life and death. You know, there's a heaven, and there is a hell. There's both. See, everybody tries to, you know, they like to talk about the blessings of God and all these good things. But I want you to understand if you're not walking in Him, then there's also a place that was, was actually made for the devil and his angels. And I just ask you today, as we close, are you serving Him with everything you got today? Are you serving Jesus with everything you got? Are you half-heartedly serving Him? Do you just serve Him just because other people look at you and say, Oh, well, that's a nice person. Are you really serving Jesus Christ with everything that you have? Are you using all the gifts that He's given you to, to better the kingdom of God? So let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer this morning. I want to open the altar up for those that that don't know Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. I always do that because there's always someone in the crowd. And, and can I tell you that it doesn't really matter what the preacher's saying when the Holy Spirit of God has got somebody under conviction. See, when somebody's under conviction, then it doesn't matter what's being said because God is speaking directly to their heart. So if there's someone out here this morning that's under conviction that needs to know Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, then I invite you to come on up.
This altar's open. But let's pray this morning. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I, I just ask, God, that you would be with us, God, that you would, you would strengthen us as the body of Christ, as the church of Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, make us strong, God. Lord, I pray that those that were brought in today into the church, God, that you would place a, a hedge of protection around them, God. Lord, that this church would gather around them. God, that we would lift them up, God, that we would pray for them, that we would encourage them, God, that we would love on them in a way that maybe they've never experienced in their life, God. Because, Lord, we're in this together. Lord, we're your body. We're your children, God. And so, Lord, I pray, God, that you would touch each and every one that was represented today up here that joined the church today. God, that you would touch every family represented, Lord. Lord, be with them. And God, I pray, Lord, if there be one out here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, that today would be that day where you would break through. Today would be that day where you would set them free from sin, from death, from hell, from Satan, that you would set them free today, Lord. And God, we thank you, Lord, that we're a church, God, that serves you, God. We're a church that loves you, Lord. And Lord, we're a church that's going to continue the work no matter what. Lord, we're going to continue the work. God, you tell us that the, the laborers are few, but the harvest is great. Father, send laborers into the harvest, God. Lord, that we might be known as a, as a harvest place, God. As a place that's known by, by the souls that come in the kingdom through this ministry. And God, we're just going to love you and thank you for everything today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.